Today's video is going to blow your mind because I have brought a special mentor and coach for you guys who want to start your journey in cloud. Why cloud? Because cloud is the hottest job available not only in the UK but across the world. So if you want to earn a lot of money, be in demand and also migrate from your own country, you should start your journey in cloud today. And today's mentor, he is an ex-Google, ex-Facebook and ex-NASA and currently is working in a leading banking firm. So based on his knowledge and experience, he's going to help you start your journey as a cloud analyst. And I also have to add something. He is also a Google Code Jam and Facebook Hacker Cup World Semi-Finalist and Top Coder Open TCO 2020 to 2021 and 2020 World Finalist. So you can see there can be no one better than him who can teach you or tell you what should be your roadmap for cloud analysts. So his name is Devang and with Without wasting any further time, let me introduce you guys to him now. Hi, Devang. Welcome to Your Knowledge Buddy. And thank you for taking out time for being on my show. Hi, Sarika. Thanks for inviting me. Hoping to have a good conversation here. Absolutely. So, Devang, if you don't mind, can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Sure, Sarika. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to be here. I'm Devang. I'm working as a tech lead at Bank of Montreal. Presently, I'm working with Toronto and New York office. I, has the, uh, I properly lead the commercial banking and the hedge fund segment. Prior to working at Bank of Montreal, I worked with Facebook and Google, where I was part of the WhatsApp and the Google team respectively. I have worked in multiple locations, I would say 11 countries to be very precise. So prior moving to Canada and US, I have worked in UK and few countries of Europe and I started my journey with back in India and then I moved to Singapore. Okay, and I want to just add one line so for my audience who don't know, Devang, he had managed to get his British passport at a very early age due to his qualification and skills, but he was not very happy and content. And he's in US now because he's trying to explore more opportunities for himself. That excites him. Okay, on that note, today we are here to present the roadmap for a cloud analyst or cloud engineer. So Devang has already prepared a lot of data for us. So let's stay back and learn from Devang. So Devang, over to you. All right. So the agenda for today's session is going to be roadmap for cloud engineering. I'm going to cover this because I understand we have both categories of audience for cloud engineering as well as for cloud analysts. So I'll go one by one. I'll go a bit slow as well for the precise. The agenda that we're going to cover includes two roles. What is cloud engineering and the associated roles with cloud engineering? And second is what are the steps or the roadmaps or the guidelines you need to follow a cloud engineer? Uh, remind me of one thing is that this is not a hard and fast tool. There are many roadmaps to give. So this is a very generic roadmap. It's not one shoe fits all type kind of thing, right? So you can feel free to modify as per your own personalization. Who is this for? Anybody from any background can start career in IT. There is no prerequisite required to start your career as a cloud engineer. So no matter which domain, it's a lot of misconception among people is that you have to be an IT degree or a bachelor's or a master's to start being a cloud engineer. It's nothing like that. In fact, majority of the cloud certifications, they don't even need any kind of background in the IT. As long as you are good and watching the lectures from appropriate lessons or appropriate resources, anybody can start their career as a cloud engineer or a cloud analyst. Moving on to the first agenda, which is the introduction. What do we mean by cloud computing? It's a very common term to say cloud computing. Cloud computing, if I have to summarize enough, cloud computing refers to services like storage, databases, softwares, analytics, and much more to be made accessible via the internet. It's a very common phrase you which might have heard that cloud is nothing. Cloud is just someone else platform or someone else computer. That's exactly what you mean by cloud. You take someone else platform. It can be a public cloud, can be a private cloud. There is a whole machine with the setup there with databases, storage, networking, analytics, many of the services built on the top, and you are just accessing them. And obviously, since you're accessing them, so you're paying them for per access. It can be based upon API calls. It can be based upon number of hours infrastructure service, platform as service, or whatever modern you have to use. Moving on, what is a cloud computing engineer? A cloud engineer is an IT professional who is responsible for technological aspects of cloud computing, which includes your system design, planning, maintenance, as well as supports. Now, the moment I say design, planning, maintenance, support includes a whole plethora of reports. It includes the entire IT department, to be honest, because for system designing, you will need the architects. For planning and development, you're going to need the developers as well as for QAs as well. And when I talk about maintenance support, there comes the role of cloud analyst. As you can see, these are the entire plethora of roles which covers under cloud engineering, as well as the cloud analyst. So it can be a cloud developer, which are majorly responsible for writing the code, security engineer, which are more involved with the security aspect. It can be OSWP protocol or level six or level seven level protocol. 
full stack developer, developer operations engineer, system ops administrator, data engineer, cloud architect, front end as well as back end developer, and of course, last but not the least, solutions architect. Moving on to a very precise tables of years of experience and the types of roles that you can experience. So as you can see, on the left column, you will have the freshers with the years of experience. On the right column, you have the types of roles. So you can start as a fresh as a cloud engineering analyst, cloud engineer, cloud data engineer, cloud networking engineer, or a developer, a solutions engineer, or a cloud support analyst. As you can be, if for the people who don't know, the difference between a cloud support analyst and a cloud engineer is that a cloud engineer is majorly responsible for writing the scripts as well as the autom automating whatever data is involved there. A cloud support analyst is majorly involved whenever there's an issue, either in a fraud environment or any lower environment, and they're able to analyze the logs and they are the first person to be reached by the clients. So clients do not directly reach to the cloud engineers that, hey, there is a bug. It's the cloud support analyst team or the fraud analyst team, they are, and then they roll back to the individual engineers or the team of engineers who have written that code. Similarly, for two to five years of experience, something which we call as mid-level engineers, they include all of these kind of roles along with some more roles like DevOps engineer, site reliability engineer, infrastructure engineer, platform engineer. And after you gain over five years of experience, generally we enter in the bracket of senior engineer. They include all of these roles along with the senior title attached to it, along with some moving along the hierarchy will go with cloud architect, cloud consultant, DevOps architect, infrastructure architect. Now, one more thing I would like to mention here is that architects and consultants, they are majorly responsible for client facing role. So when you when you go over a certain level, let's say five years of experience, or let's say a senior engineer per se, there you are not just responsible for the technical aspect of it. You're also responsible for the business aspect of it. What do you mean by that? You will not be just responsible for writing the code. You'll be also responsible for business metrics, connecting with the new clients, potentially engaging with the customers, and making sure that you are personalizing your cloud services as per their requirement. Just an example, if you're working at AWS, how your AWS services might be required for a customer which has over 10,000 plus uh, users versus a customer who has only 100 plus users, right? So you need to personalize all those services accordingly. Moving on to agenda two, we have the steps to become a cloud engineer. And I think that's what the major critical slide is about, the roadmap. As I said, I have completed this roadmap in a very generic way. So everybody who's coming from different parts of the diverse backgrounds, they can all can understand and go for it. There are three main pillars, as you can see, and I've choose a very, very common thing. I'm sure you guys must have played this game. So I'm just thinking three common theme for Mario, step one, step two, and step three, and how you move to the cloud computing engineer. So step one is proficiency in any cloud computing platform. Step two is experience in at least one programming language, and step three is a specialization. I'll cover this one by one. Let's move to the step one, which is gaining proficiency in a cloud computing platform. As I mentioned before, cloud computing platforms, they can be public clouds or they can be private clouds. Public clouds is something which everybody can have. The cloud is something which access is given to a certain limited people or certain limited clients or customers or stakeholders. That's why they're called private cloud, right? Now, majority of these cloud services, the three major public clouds that we have is AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, with AWS being the market leader, occupying more than 50% of the market share. Oracle is also growing, Oracle Cloud Public Cloud, Oracle Public Cloud is also growing, but yeah, it's still in progress. Now, all of these cloud platforms that you can see, AWS, GCP, and Azure, you can just go to their websites and you can definitely, I'll mention the links in the, in the, in the description session. You can go to their website and from their website, you can access this platform, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Now the question comes, how do you get certified by this AWS, Azure, or the Cloud Cloud Platform? Or do you need to be associated or certified with all three platforms? The answer is no. Even it's better than learning all three platforms. I would say choose any one of your choice, whatever you prefer best or whatever you are targeting in your career journey, or maybe your company requires it because we have variety of audience. So depending upon your personal goals, I personally prefer AWS because they have a lot of service and they have pretty much everything that you need. And to be very honest, if you have worked with Azure, or if you have worked with GCP, or if you have worked with AWS, you can pretty much move across the tables and you can work in any other platforms. So start with whatever suits your needs. Starting with it, all three of them are free and all three of them have their own course of certifications. Certifications are paid. Certifications are not free. Certifications have their own different levels and all. But if I talk generically, let's make our one by one. In Microsoft Azure, you have three different Cavalos certifications, which includes developer associate, administrator associate, and the most top level is Azure architect. So once you achieve the Azure architect, you have become the highest degree that you can achieve in a Microsoft Azure. AWS has a bit more certifications. It starts with developer associate, AWS developer associate, 
goes with the solution architect and goes to finally from the senior solutions architect. And that is the highest level that you can achieve in AWS. Similarly for GCP, GCP has only two certifications as I'm aware of, or as I have checked this morning to be very precise. One is the GCP engineer and one is the GCP architect. So the names that you are seeing here, AZ202 and AZ900, these are name of the modules. So these are the step by step module you cover value for these certifications. Again, I repeat, it's completely your choice, whichever certifications you want to do. Just make sure you are not doing it just for the sake of certification, because there's no point in achieving certificate and you don't know anything about handling major things or very minute things in the cloud, right? So either you do it by AWS or you do it by Azure or you do it by Google Cloud, it's totally up to you and meeting your requirements, but make sure that you complete it with whatever the required criteria are. Step number two, which is to becoming a cloud computing engineer is being experienced in at least one programming language. Now, one more myth to uh, clear here is that being a cloud engineer does not mean that you will not be writing the code. It's a very, very, very incorrect statement. As a cloud engineer or a cloud analyst, you will be writing the code and you should be able to write the code. Some of the major programming languages which are used in the cloud computing includes Python, Golang, Clojure, and Java. Majority of the common languages are Python and Java because they are popularly used, but Clojure is also very heavily used if you are actually technically working on a cloud engineering role and you have to expose a lot of logs. But in the case of Python and Golang or Python or Java specifically, why they are required? They are required in the automation scripts. A lot of times when you're coding as a cloud analyst or a cloud engineer, you would need to automate a lot of things. Either it requires on the server side or requires on the log side, you would need to write a lot of automation. And since Python is very easy to write, and everybody across the team understands that. So it's very easy to write automation scripts in the Python. Same goes for the use case of Golang. It's just that it's a functional programming language instead of the object oriented one. Finally is the last part, which is the step three, which is the specialization is cloud computing engineer. These are the four building blocks of any computer, I would say, not specifically cloud computer because cloud computer is just a computer place somewhere else and you're playing it. And that's why you are saying that it is a cloud, right? So four major aspects of any computing machine you can think is one, storage and networking, Second, security and disaster recovery. Third, virtualization operating system. This is most important because the entire concept of cloud is built upon the virtualization concept. And fourth is web services and DevOps. So let's deep down into one by one. Number one, storage and networking. You need to understand where and how the data is stored, how it can be accessed from multiple resources. And of course, a good understanding of networking fundamentals and virtual networks. Some important topics to mention here is understanding different type of databases and data warehouses and data lakes. These three are completely different terms, just to be clear. So in terms of databases, you can talk about relational databases versus non-relational databases, SQL databases versus NoSQL databases. How do you access them? What are the security protocols involved? What are the links involved in that? And how you access the URLs, which are covered by the security links. In terms of networking, you should be knowing about the different protocols, including HTTP, HTTPS, TCP, OSWP. These are very common protocols which are used in cloud platforms. Then we talked about virtualization operating system. As I mentioned, virtualization is the core concept of building any cloud computing machine. So how virtual networks can be used to emulate different components, definitely and must understand what is it Docker. So you might have heard Docker from a lot of different resources. You need to understand what is Docker, how does the concept of hypervision comes into play, and how it is able to create multiple machines and run them parallelly instead of running them sequentially. Uh, I, I hope I'm not going into too deep or too complex topics, but these are very basic topics. And when you start running all that, you will start learning all that you will actually move and actually enjoy understanding how cloud works or cloud as an infrastructure in general works. Second part is operating systems. Now under operating system, 99 to 95% of time, you will be working with Linux as operating system where majority of the clouds are services. Either it's an AWS server or it's a Red Hat server or uh, OpenShift, whatever it is built upon Linux. 10%, hardly 10% or 5% of the systems are built in Windows as well. So it's good to know. But I believe majority of the people know about Windows. So the people where the struggle is actually the Linux architecture. So it's good to understand Linux basic commands as well as how to understand, create a file, delete a file, access a file, print a file path, so on and so forth. Number three is security and disaster recovery. This is very, very important. So when I talk about security and disaster recovery, it includes understanding how your data applications and infrastructure can be protected because you are using somebody else's computer. It's not an on-prem server, or on-premises server where you have physically present and everything is secure. Even though it is by a Google or AWS or Microsoft, at the end of the day, it's someone else's machine and it's your data which is residing in their machine. So you need to be 100% sure. Obviously, they're going to provide you security services because you're paying for that. 
as well as they have what are the security protocols which are covered by their services. But also you need to make sure at your end, especially if you're working in a very precise industry where money is involved, like financial industry or a fintech industry, you have to be very responsible for any kind of data that you're using and sharing with. Second part comes for disaster recovery, which includes preparing for any unexpected circumstances, making sure your systems are up to date and they're regularly backed up to some amount of any loss of data, which includes creating regular backups, as well as making protocols and having your pager duty always on call, right? So whenever there's a bug informed, the appropriate teams and the response delivery team, they're always up on the fields. Last part is web services and DevOps. So web services and DevOps are also a very important part of a cloud computing engineer, which includes understanding of APIs, web services. Working on different websites will definitely help you here. APIs can include backend APIs and connecting with the client side. How do you send a response from a server to a client? Can be a good, good start to understand the web APIs. Understanding how cloud computing provides a centralized platform for testing, deployment, and production for DevOps automation, which includes your CI CD pipeline as well. So this is your final roadmap. We have covered all three pillars, gaining proficiency in any of the cloud computing platforms, step number one. Step number two, being experienced in at least one programming language. And step number three, the specialization part. And finally, successfully you'll become a cloud computing engineer. Last, we'd like to talk about the salaries which are offered in the cloud computing engineering salaries. Now remind you, this is an average data. Cloud computing salaries can go up to much higher than that, to be very honest, because I've seen people earning much higher than that. It all depends upon your skills and the certifications. So focus on earning more and more skills and more certifications will gain you visibility across the platforms. So in the United States, if I talk about the cloud computing engineers, starting from a fresher, they can earn up to 120 to 150K per annum. Again, it depends on locations in different United States because this is a concept of purchase power parity across the states as well. In India, if I talk about cloud company engineers have paid somewhere between six lakhs to eight lakh for a fresher. For a senior role, it can go up to a very high level. And of course, the remuneration will grow as long as you are good at your skills and the, you will get paid in proportionality of the complexity of the problems you are solving. So yeah, and finally, summarizing all the details that we have covered in the roadmap. Number one, understand the basics of cloud computing and associated roles. Second, develop a strong foundation in IT concept. Third, choose a cloud service provider. Again, completely your choice. I will not advocate for any of the platforms. Feel free to choose yours. Fourth, acquire cloud certifications. One more thing to mention here, please do share these cloud certifications. If you acquire, let's say if you acquired AWS certifications, please share across LinkedIn or any other profile platforms that you would like to share or mention it in your resume because it is very useful and it comes very handy when somebody is reading your resume or reading your LinkedIn profile. Fourth is deepen your knowledge with associate level certifications. And last but not the least, hands-on experience with the cloud services. So basic services like tracking trace, like Dynatrace, as well as Kibana and Gravana services, RDCs, Lambda logs, these are some very common terms which are used in clouds. So make sure you have a hands-on experience with these cloud services. Thank you very much. It was very useful. And I hope anyone who is looking to start their career as a cloud engineer or cloud analyst, this is going to help them a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay. So Devon, can I just ask you one question? If anybody from my audience wants to connect with you, are you available on any social handle or emails? How can people connect with you for any kind of tips or recommendation or advice? Sure. I'm usually active on LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, the thing is that my LinkedIn DM is always full. So I might be a bit delayed in giving responses, but I'm very easily reachable on TalkMate as well as on Instagram. If you want a one is to one session, I do one is to one session because a lot of people have reached out to me via LinkedIn. So I do that on TalkMate. Yeah. Um, for the query, if you have, you can reach out to via Instagram as well as via LinkedIn. I'm available on YouTube as well, but it's just that I don't get much time to record content, which I'll start in a sometime as well. And if you want to like more technical content, I have my Medium article as well. So there you can follow it. Great. So if you can provide me all the links and it will be provided in the pinned comment, it will be in the video description. So guys, go and check out Devan's profile. And if you got any questions, you can also have your one-to-one -one with him booking his links. So I'm going to leave all the details below. Thank you for taking out time to record this video. Thank you very much. And all the best to you for your career journey. Thanks. Thanks, Sari.